2020 started out really bizarre and was pretty quickly filled with a lot of tragedy and a loss of faith and trust in a lot of humans, a lot of humanity. I started to question a lot of things about how I saw the world and the fact that there were so many people out there who saw it in such a different way and responded in such a violent way to change and people fighting for social justice and just like weeks after George Floyd was killed, there started to be a real surge in the Black Lives Matter movement. And so the country was kind of primed to fight for social justice. The focus at the time was on racial inequality. And I had already begun kind of curating a film series, both for myself to kind of educate myself, but also to try to spread a message of um, empathy and broaden people's worldviews a little bit and introduce them to some really great films that I that had helped me kind of learn a little bit more about an experience that I am very not privy to. So I was in the midst of curating this series when I saw that Joe Rowling had decided to make a snarky tweet that basically implied that trans women were not women. I remembered that there had been some speculation, maybe a year or two before, that Joe Rowling was leaning sort of anti-trans, but I'd kind of just brushed it off as speculation because she spent so much of her life advocating for people that often are looked over. You know, she worked for Amnesty International and had been a very strong uh, women's rights activist and created a lot of really strong female characters in her, in her stories. So to me, I was just like, oh, they're just reading something into it and that's not really what's going on. So I kind of brushed it off. And this tweet that she that she shared that she posted like I said it was snarky so it had her sense of humor like I could tell that she was the one who had written it and so some people called her out on it and they used very incendiary language and they called her a turf and I didn't know what a turf was so I looked it up um, because it kind of you know it's four letters, so I thought it might be some sort of bad word. Like, I was like, oh, that sounds like they're going too far with whatever they're calling her. They're, they're taking it out of proportion. But what TERF is, is it's actually an acronym that means Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. It's like a segment of feminists who don't include trans people within that advocacy. They're, they're very, like, pro-women but also by being anti-trans. And for anybody who has seen the first video that I put on here, and um, I'll, I could link it below, so you can go to it if you haven't seen it. I'm a very big believer in the idea that you don't have to push people out from under the umbrella of inclusion in order to feel valid and included in that space. There's enough room for everybody, and so I don't think we should be excluding anyone from whatever space you feel like you belong to. You belong, and trans women are women, and trans men are men, and non-binary identities are valid. Sorry, just a soapbox moment there, because I still feel very strongly about this, and it is very <sighs> so I was like oh so that's what a turf is it's not this four letter word that I thought it was they're actually pretty accurate there was still like some real big pushback and then Joe Rowling then sent out a few more tweets sort of like 
in response to the pushback. And I, I tend to see that, you know, people do tend to go too far on some of those things. And that's why I don't really engage in any of that kind of back and forth on social media. Because I just feel like it just doesn't go anywhere positive. Then a couple days passed and there hadn't been any new tweets from Joe Rowling, but several members of the Harry Potter cast, um, like Emma Watson, Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, Eddie Redmayne, Ivana Lynch, I mean a bunch of people, mostly the young people, put out tweets or posts that were basically apologizing to the trans community for the comments that JK Rowling had posted and saying like, we're with you, you're valid. And so that made me feel better about the the whole situation. I was like, okay, so it's, it's, it's pretty much just Joe. Everybody else involved with this series gets it and knows that she's in the wrong. And once she sees that everybody else is telling her that she's in the wrong, she'll come out on the other side of it, having learned something, she'll apologize, and we can we can move on. And this pause in my trust in, in Joe Rowling, my idolization of her, it can resume because everybody makes mistakes. Everybody is afforded the opportunity to stumble, learn from that and grow. We should all be giving everybody the chance to do that. So I was like, okay, so she hasn't tweeted anything in a while. So that probably means that she's taking the time to educate herself, talk to people, and then she'll come back and she'll apologize. And she will, if not retract what she said, she'll just be like, oh, I didn't get it, but I'm educating myself. And so I just was sort of waiting for that next tweet or whatever it was going to be, but it wasn't a tweet. She posted basically like a personal essay on, I think it was on her site. And I was like, well, this is very, this is very Joe Rowling. And that she really just like wrote out all her thoughts and it's going to be a really great essay and it's going to explain everything and we can move on from here. <laughs> 